Ford's current theme of total performance 65 implies that the Galaxy 500 is out in front of its field. Let's put the Fury 3 up against the Galaxy and see how that claim holds up. We'll keep a running score of the points made by each car. Now to most owners, total performance is not confined to power and roadability. To him, it also includes comfort and convenience, safety and durability, and styling. Let's look at the styling of the Ford front end. It has stacked headlights like the Fury, but the abrupt way the grille ends at each side seems to separate it from the headlights, makes the Ford front end seem narrower and higher. Here's Fury 3 with the wide sweep of its grille making the headlights an integral part of it. This is the low, broad look at its best. Score one for Fury. From the rear, Ford looks surprisingly high and bulky, partially due to the squared off tail lights and sheet metal. The whole rear end is so plain it could be mistaken for a low line model, although this is a Galaxy 500. You'd never mistake Fury 3 for anything but high line. With its dual tail lights and backup lights set in clusters, and its full width satin silver trim framed in a chrome molding. Score another for Fury. Inside the deck lids, there are more differences. The young lady has a strenuous 26 inch haul to get her bag up and into the Ford trunk. The Fury trunk sill is three and a half inches closer to the ground, a big difference when you're loading the trunk. Unloading, she has a long 10 and a half inch lift to remove her bag from the Ford. With Fury, she has less than half that lift, a mere five inches. Finally, the Fury trunk floor is wider than Ford's. With the spare up out of the way and the deck lid opening almost six inches wider, that makes a total of three trunk points for Fury. Around on the side, Fury has two position door stops on all doors, but the Ford rear doors have only one stop. Another convenience point for Fury, because its intermediate stop shown here, holds the rear door safely open in tight parking spots. Here's our total performance scoreboard, and it shows the big Fury earned points for front and rear end styling, for a wider trunk that's easier to load and unload, and two position door stops on all doors. Inside, the Ford front seats have a surface design treatment that only simulates pleats. In the Fury seat, the pleats are actually sewn in. They're deep pleats that give an authentic custom look to the Fury, and the strongly stitched folds strengthen the fabric, help it stay wrinkle free. This Fury front seat is a full inch and a half higher than Ford seat, which is indicated by the dotted line. Fury's greater seat height gives the driver better down front visibility and extra support for thighs and back on long trips. At the top, you see the Ford instrument panel, only a speedometer and a gas gauge. Lights are used to indicate charging, temperature, and oil pressure. Compare this with the more complete instrumentation standard on the Fury panel. Ford's automatic transmission quadrant is perched on the steering column, while the Fury range indicator is an integral part of the instrument panel. On Ford, it's a stretch to reach the ashtray. And the controls for the cowl fresh air vents are not much more conveniently located. In contrast, the Fury ashtray is right at hand and the cowl vent controls couldn't be handier because they're positioned at either side of the steering column. And Fury's a big car inside. This Fury hardtop has more legroom and hip room front and rear. Fury has more rear seat shoulder room, but Ford and Fury are equal in front. Fury has more rear seat headroom, while Ford has a one-tenth inch advantage in front seat headroom. However, Fury's standard front seat can be lowered to overcome that one small Ford headroom advantage, or it can be raised, moved forward or back, and even tilted. Then, too, there's more footroom and flat floor space both front and rear because of Fury's narrower sills and tunnels. Yes, this Fury hardtop does top Ford in eight out of ten interior dimensions. And if we were comparing sedans, it would be nine out of ten. Fury's a big car with big car visibility. Fury's windshield is a full 16 inches deep from header to instrument panel. This same dimension in Ford measures only 13 and one quarter inches. You can see for yourself the extra close in view of the road you get in Fury, how much easier it is to see overhead traffic lights. To wipe that big car windshield, Fury has 18 inch wiper blades. The dotted line shows the smaller area wiped by the 16 inch Ford blades. Bad weather doesn't blot out visibility in the Fury just when you need it most. 
The scoreboard again, and Fury registers points for pleated seat trim and higher front seats. A more complete instrument panel, handier ashtray and vent knobs, and a big edge in interior room, glass area, and wipers. This year, Ford has gone to full coil spring suspension. Perhaps that's the reason they took more than 250 pounds out of the Galaxy sedan. Fury employs the performance-proved, owner-approved torsion air suspension with front torsion bars and rear leaf springs. Experts agree that it tops any American coil spring suspension in control over rough roads and through tight turns. Let's add engines to the score. In standard six-cylinder engines, Galaxy is rated at 150 horsepower, Fury at 145. These engines are designed primarily for economy, but Galaxy scores a point. With the standard V8s, the story is reversed. The Galaxy engine has 200 horsepower, the Fury engine 230. Mark up one for Fury. In the first V8 option, the Ford Galaxy engine produces 20 horsepower less than the Fury engine. In the second V8 option, the Galaxy engine is 30 horsepower under Fury. And there is no Ford regular production V8 option to match the Fury high performance V8 with its four barrel carburetor, special camshaft, unsilenced air cleaner, and dual exhaust. In short, Fury has more V8 power than Ford all along the line. Both Ford and Fury offer modern three-speed automatic transmissions, but a major difference between the Ford and Fury transmissions is one that extends to the entire driveline. For Fury is the car with the five-year, 50,000-mile warranty on engine, transmission, and drivetrain. This longer protection against repair costs gives the Fury owner extra confidence in the dependability of his car. Ford owners have less than half as much protection with their two-year, 24,000-mile warranty. The Fury's a big car with big car stopping power. Brake lining area, 202.1 square inches. Ford, only 175.6 inches. Fury's extra lining area also means longer intervals between relining jobs. And this Fury's big 25-gallon gas tank now makes once-a-week fill-ups at your favorite station a practical proposition. Ford still uses a 20-gallon tank. Fury features bigger tires where they are needed. While Ford's V8 models use 735 by 14 tires, Fury V8s use the larger, longer-wearing 775 by 14 tires. Another look at the board, and we see this Fury shapes up as a tremendous road car, and certainly a short demonstration will bear this out. Fury's big car bigness really shows up in the wagons. Fury has a longer wheelbase, is wider, and it's longer overall by more than six inches. And the Fury wagon's bigger inside. More floor length from front seat back to the closed tailgate, and almost a foot more than Ford when the gate is open. Fury also has a wider tailgate opening and over five cubic feet more total cargo space. In nine passenger models, Fury has a standard full-width rear seat that folds flat with half the operations needed to put the Galaxy center-facing rear seats down. And the Galaxy seat must be folded to get at the spare tire. Fury's seat isn't in the way of the spare. Money, the price of performance, is an important aspect of the total picture. So let's add the price structure of both cars to the total performance scoreboard. The Galaxy has a tiny price advantage in four-door sedans and two-door hardtops. It ranges from four to six dollars. However, Fury 3 is eleven dollars under the Galaxy 500 V8 in four-door hardtop and convertible models, ninety dollars under Galaxy in the nine-passenger wagon, and a prospect pleasing one hundred and twenty-three dollars in the six-passenger wagon. Despite Fury's greater price margin, we credit each car with four points on the board. Now here's the final score. Fury 3 wins decisively with 45 total performance points to Galaxy's 8. Fury's winning margin extends from its unmistakable Highline styling to the undeniable advantages of its 550 warranty, and from its bigger glass area and wipers to bigger wagons. The overall prices are rated even, although the price tags on Fury wagons are much lower. The Fury's points of advantage are all points of importance in the prospect's concept of total performance. Points that can influence prospects to buy the Plush Fury 3.